Hello. So, guys, we filmed our uh, our first ever Dope Black Dads uh, podcast today, and uh, we didn't have a cameraman. I just set it up, went on YouTube, got a tutorial, super basic stuff, um, and then I forgot to take the autofocus off, and so <laughs> there's a uh, it's a little bit blurry, but. I'm a, I don't want to be the enemy of progress, so I'm going to put it up anyway. All right, so this is our first batch of videos. Uh, I promise the next one will be better. So subscribe, um, stay tuned. Um, apologies for the bad um, focus. And actually, sorry for the bad sound, because my microphone didn't turn up either. So uh, this is the first visual of this. And I think in years to come, we will look back and laugh at this, but also... The information is rich, so I, I want to keep sharing it. So um, enjoy it, um, and then I'll see you on the other side. Thanks. Uh, so this is the Dot Black Dad podcast. Um, there's a slight change of format. We're, we're going shorter. We're going 20-minute increments because there's so much to cover that we didn't have time to do it all in podcast. So um, today, I'm Marvin Harrison, as you may know. Today, we have... Chris Bex. It's a projector, my friend. Same with the chest. You sound like you weren't sure of who you are. Who are you? <laughs> this is like Wakanda. Who are you? Christopher Bex of the Ghanaian Ashanti tribe. Bro, right? And the thing is, that was at MC base as well. You just came to say. <laughs> I'm Darwood Grace, uh, aka Black Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I'm David A. Class. David A. Class? Yeah, just David A. Class. You're not, you're not, you're not given the government? Never B. Class. Never B. Class. <laughs> <laughs> not that man. So today we were talking about, um, there's, there's tons of subjects in the group this week and we've been off since Christmas so there's like a hundred things to, that were flowing around but we were ultimately wrapping up on just our Kelly just now and the start's slightly different because we were talking about like the actual part that preceded what he did and what actually happened to him that informed the monster because it, it actually is like yes it's important that we acknowledge the victims and I think the world is doing that mm -hmm. and I think the world is, is damning him. But I think before that, him and his older brother was younger brother, younger brother was was raped by the older sister. Yeah. And so that talked about we that brought up a subject about what we're doing to safeguard our kids to prevent them from becoming monsters that yeah. one day do this. Do, t t do you do you remember what the interview was about? What, what did he say in it? What did the brother, okay's brother, say? He was literally talking about how it started and um, the way the sister used to do it. Mm. And there were just elements of what she used to do, like maybe like one of them wasn't allowed to go out. Mm. She'll think of a reason why you can't go out to play and everyone else will go out to play. And then she'll keep that person in the house. And then when you kind of think about it, like what did our kid used to do? Like keep these women in the house. Shit. So there's yeah. lots of little elements of like what yeah. she used to do to him that he kind of started later on implementing in his own life. Yeah, you know, yeah. I say so. And I think that mm. it awakened the real dark part of, of of him and um the, the younger brother said that the difference between him and R. Kelly was that after a while R. Kelly began to enjoy Fuck. what was going on with his I never knew that that's crazy him. okay so yeah yeah I think uh, like just <coughs> listening to what you're saying it just sounds like R. Kelly because he doesn't sound apologetic for his behaviour at all I haven't heard I anything. think I think it's because he's thinks it's normal yeah. and from what you're just saying it sounds like he's found a way in his head to normalize his behavior mm. to the point that he still doesn't think what he's done is wrong yeah uh, hence why he just kept doing it when he realized it was against the law mm. he made sure that all the victims were of consensual age yeah, but yeah. still did the same things to them and kept them below the age of 21 yeah which is <laughs> that's wild so, so it's it's weird because obviously this has been uh, this has been being spoken about for over a week or for like for half, almost a week now, and it's like we've been talking about it as well in the group. But I kind of feel like the obvious parts of yes, he's a monster. Yeah. And we don't need his music celebrated anywhere. We don't need him celebrated. We don't want to see him in a show. He needs that needs to be managed out, and we need to figure out how to heal as from this. But we, everybody knew since ninety four, five, six, yeah. whatever that like that yeah, Leah thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Did anyone see the Dame Dash recollection of Aaliyah thing? Yep. Because he was talking about um, Aaliyah said to just Oval to drop it, but then I've heard rumours about Aaliyah and the mum dating R. Kelly at one point at the same time. I've heard loads of like really random bits of information, which is not really worth speculating on, but it's super interesting that there just seems to be a trail of her 
where even people who probably should have called him out potentially are also hurt and then didn't do it also. But it's just like, which is why I really want to focus on the beginning part because yes, we can say all of this has happened and we should demonize it, but I think that's being done. But where the actual question is, and as dads, like I'm worried about where I, my child sleeps. Yeah. And, I, and, and we, me and Nina are just saying like, we shouldn't allow our daughter to stay at anybody's house, period. Our grandparents' house is the only, our mother's house, their grandparents is the only person we'll be happy for them to stay with, but like absolutely no one else. Yeah. And, that, and that's what it's ultimately become because I can't take the risk on my kid's safety. In any like, way as, as we were saying, like sometimes the abuser, even if with the R. Kelly case, the abuser was his sister, so that's within the house. Yeah. 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 Like, exactly. To be honest, how do you safeguard your children? Mm. Like, I think it, it stems from conversations as soon as they're ready to hear it. Mm. Like, like, even when it's that, because we had the mothers over and they were talking about they still haven't had the sex conversation with their kids at like awkward. Seven, six, saying, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, it's but awkward. at that point, they are susceptible. And one, one of the mothers, their daughter, had, a, had, had an incident with an older female child. Where And so, like, and I was just like, yeah, what, when? because I think the daughter was six at the time. When do you have that conversation? Because clearly you need to have it sooner and sooner because it's happening to people at all ages and you can't sit there and be like, I don't introduce sex to them because sex is being introduced to them anyway. Yeah. yeah. How, how, how what, your child, your son's 17. No, my I child. remember my, my, my son, and you know, Kaz, forgive me if you see this, I'm just going to expose you. When he was about four, mm. he had a hard on and he was like, Dad, what's this? Like, I don't, it just happens. Mm. And so I decided to explain how natural it was and I had a real conversation about yeah. the thing, but I did it for his age at the time. Right, okay. And I used to always say to him, there are certain things that as you get older, you'll understand a bit more. But yeah. I'll tell you now and you can question me as much as you want. Mm. But if you're still not sure, just keep asking. Mm. And, that, and that's how I kind of... But it was an awkward combo. Yeah. And that, and yeah, well, now he's like 17, he thinks like I have no idea about women and he knows it all, so it's. <laughs> you'll find you'll be the expert. Like, yeah, yeah, you'll be the expert. <laughs> like, I've been your age, you haven't been mine. So, yeah. You know. But David, your son's free. Yeah. And like, how have you started? I know he's not, you know, because I'm looking at my son, he's also three. I'm not mm. thinking of those things, but there's a part of me that's like, I want to hit this head on. Have you yeah. thought about how you're going to do it? How you're going to have that conversation? Uh, no. Mm. I, I, maybe I'm being naive, but I just feel like I've got time. Because <laughs> he's free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when he, when he starts nursery, you know, he's in preschool. Um, he'll start school like in like a year and a half, something like that. But, yeah, I don't know. I, I actually don't know. Mm. Like, what, See. what's the purpose of somebody at that age and knowing about sex. Yeah. Okay, what about, well, all right, so I don't know about sex, but at the very least knowing about body parts, knowing about who should touch you and who shouldn't. Yeah, I think you can, I think you can, um, you can implement that from quite early. Mm. No one else is That's what to I was going to say, yeah. Maybe from the, <laughs> sadly, <laughs> from the point they go into interactive environment, preschool, whatever, with people you don't know. Yeah. Um, like, just a very simple, like, nobody's allowed to touch mm. you here kind of thing so how, how do you approach the conversation because then people takes men the watching with, yeah. yeah so how, how, how do you That's see easy your special parts yeah. and only you're allowed to touch them mm. and I don't know how you say it because you might say it like, only mummy and daddy but mm. even that sounds weird like do you know what I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. but there's a way you've got to explain it where nobody else can but then when they're in like preschool where they go toilets and mm. they have like teachers helping and them assisting them yeah so yeah, but it shouldn't be touching their private parts though no uh, if it's a girl, should they might? Do they like? In terms of cleaning, like, yeah. yeah. I don't. I really don't know. So they, no, they, no, they do. You've got to ask about you know. I'll, 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 and and, and right. what what makes what safeguards that? What makes it okay? Is it yeah. just because it's a teacher? Yeah, exactly. Because or, that's another place where the abuse can happen. So. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, what I'm trying to do is find out what's a rational like yeah. way of progressing the conversation because what it's really about is safeguarding not only from people who are already traumatized but preventing your children from becoming traumatized and then becoming those monsters so yeah in that conversation it's super difficult because we're sitting there saying right at three years old i, I tell my son now i use the correct words for his penis his bum i, I don't i don't use the playful words because yeah. i want him to be able to say directly if he feels that someone's touched something incorrectly 
Um, it makes me sad even talking about it because it's just like, as you like, we all, we all have the, yeah, it's like, you're at that point, to take a person off the planet if they touch a child. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. and I'm I'm now visualizing my son, and I know how innocent he is and how happy and optimistic he is, and also my daughter. If anybody was, she, she just the the just the sadness you overcome with the idea of somebody would change their outlook permanently. Yeah. Yeah. It's, like, it's moving me now. I'm getting yeah, upset. Yeah. But like, the, the point is, is that um, I'm using... And that's not terms. just phys- um, physical sexual abuse, you know. It's mm. other types of abuse. Like, the one thing I used to always tell my son was, like, have your own thoughts. Don't let other people influence how you think. Yeah, manipulate. And, to, and manipulate you to change your happy state. Mm. And that, like, if you're happy, be happy. If mm. you're angry, exercise that anger try not to hit people and I said talk to him like that on that level all the time and it's like how do you get your child to protect themselves from the world because there's so many yeah. horrors out there in the world even from children to children yeah like how do you stop your child from being bullied how do you stop them from <coughs> being a bully mm. and all, all those types of things and I think those are conversations you have to have with your, your children yeah. to protect them but not put like it, you have to be careful not to do it from a place of fear though mm. so that you because a lot of things we do as parents is impart our fears onto our children and yeah, start that's stifling correct. them yeah. Yeah. whereas you're supposed to just let them run wild but like yo if you run down there this might happen but go if you just go run them. down there in with this in mind mm. then feel free to run down there and yeah, I think yeah. that, that's where the conversation giving them the tools to, yeah. to do the things that they're trying to do yeah um, uh, yeah, so the, the, the safeguarding thing, there was a um, a, pam- no, that was a, a leaflet that someone put in a group, which was just like how it can happen. And I think it was basically like use the correct term so that people can, your child can identify when they've been touched. It's sleepovers where it happens the most often. It's usually people directly in your family. Because all of the age where I think it was like, we, we saw those adverts of like, White Stranger. men in bands, yeah. yeah. Stranger yeah. danger, yeah. and it's yeah. like even when you think of pedophiles, the first thing you think of is an old white guy in with no hair. Yeah, in a band. Like you never think of a good-looking normal yeah. guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Being a pedophile. Yeah, but they're probably the worst ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like pedophiles have no disguise, stereotype. No yeah, version, no but be we've, anybody yeah, but we've got that a nonce is a old white guy. Yeah, were well, they repainting that to become Muslim men though? I'm not seriously. Yeah, they're, they're doing their best to repaint that. Oh, they're, oh, they're yeah, trying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. and is it white guys trying? Right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you don't like the stereotype. Well, most likely, yeah. It's probably one of the last stereotypes that really stick in the life when I was. I was working in the construction industry, literally, and I had the same conversation. I goes, old white guys look like pedos, and <laughs> and all the white guys there were like, yeah, that's that's practically true so if they're yeah. trying to get Indian well like it's, it's more just like that advert yeah. is what we all grew up on and